Battle Star Plays in association with WWWFV Radio Studios are proud to present a new fantastic, fearless female fighter for freedom for this, our glittering golden age of grand heroism and adventure. We present tonight for your astonishment and amazement the sensational new story, Introducing Wonder Woman. <laughs> At last, in a world torn by the hatreds and wars of men, appears a woman to whom the problems and feats of men are mere child's play. Her identity known to none, she appears as though from nowhere to avenge an injustice or right a wrong. As lovely as Aphrodite, as wise as Athena, with the speed of Mercury and the strength of Hercules, she is known only as Wonder Woman. To begin the strange history of Wonder Woman, let us go out over the sea and follow in the wake of a plane, entirely out of gasoline. Floundering helpless in the sky, it finally crashes on the shores of an uncharted island set in the midst of a vast expanse of ocean. Bursting from the surrounding foliage, Two beautiful figures race towards the wrecked plane. Look, Princess, a strange plane. Well, what are we waiting for? Come on, let's see if anyone is hurt. Princess, it's... it's... A man, a man on Paradise Island. Quick, let's get him to the hospital. Carrying the full-grown man as if he were a child, the young princess steps through the foliage and enters the streets of a city that for all the world seems to be born of ancient Greece. <gasps> a man! How did he get here? A man! Someone tell the Queen there's a man on Paradise Island! At the hospital... Doctor, is he alright? Will he live? I don't know. He's had a concussion. We won't know anything for days. I wonder what the Queen will do with him. He can't be moved. What indeed? Mother! Your Majesty. I heard that the man was here, but I couldn't believe it. Who is he? His plane crashed on the beach of the island this morning. The princess and Mala brought him here. I found these papers in his pocket. Captain Steve Trevor, U.S. Army Intelligence Service. Hmm. Well, we can't let him die. See that he gets the best of attention. Keep his eyes covered so that, if he should awake, he will see nothing. Have his plane repaired, for he must leave as soon as he is well. Keep me informed of his progress. In the ensuing days, the princess, the queen's only daughter, is constantly at the bedside of the unconscious man, helping, watching. You ought to get some sleep, princess. You've been on the job for 14 hours. Never mind me. We must make him well. Leaving the princess to watch over the injured pilot, the doctor seeks an audience with the queen. Your Majesty. What has happened that you disturb me at this hour? Is the man... No, he is alive. It is the princess I'm worried about. I don't think she ought to be allowed in the hospital anymore. She acts rather strangely about that man. So, she is in love. I was afraid of that. You are quite right, Doctor. I shall take steps immediately. That would be wise. It's for the child's own good. <laughs> And so the princess, forbidden the pleasure of nursing the only man she can recall ever having seen in her life, goes to her mother, Hippolyte, the queen of the Amazons. But mother, I don't understand. I must see him. I must know who he is, how he got here, and why must he leave. I... I love him. I was afraid, daughter, that the time would someday arrive that I would have to satisfy your curiosity. Come, I will tell you everything. And this is the startling story unfolded by Hippolyte, Queen of the Amazons, to the princess, her daughter. In the days of ancient Greece, many centuries ago, we Amazons were the foremost nation in the world. In Amazonia, women ruled and all was well. Then one day, Hercules, the strongest man in the world, stung by taunts that he couldn't conquer the Amazon women, selected his strongest and fiercest warriors and landed on our shores. I challenged him to personal combat, because I knew that with my magic girdle, given me by Aphrodite, goddess of love, I could not lose. And win I did, but Hercules, by deceit and trickery, 
managed to secure my girdle, and soon we Amazons were taken into slavery, each woman chained at their wrists by our cruel captors. And Aphrodite, angry at me for having succumbed to the wiles of men, would do nothing to help us. Finally, our submission to men became unbearable. We could stand it no longer. And I appealed to Aphrodite again, this time not in vain, for she relented, and with her help, I secured the magic girdle from Hercules. With the magic girdle in my possession, it didn't take long for us to overcome our masters, the men, and taking from them their entire fleet, we set sail for another shore. For it was Aphrodite's condition that we leave the man-made world and establish a new world of our own. Aphrodite also decreed that we must always wear the bracelets fashioned by our captors, as a reminder that we must always keep aloof from men. And so, sailing the seas many days and nights, we found Paradise Island and set it here to build a new world. With its fertile soil, its marvelous vegetation, its varied natural resources, here there is no want, no illness, no hatreds, no wars. And as long as we remain on Paradise Island and I retain the magic girdle, we have the power of eternal life, so long as we do not permit ourselves to again be beguiled by men. We are indeed a race of wonder women. That was the promise of Aphrodite, and we must keep our promise to her if we are to remain here safe and in peace. That is why the American must go, and as soon as possible. Come, daughter, let me show you the magic sphere you've heard me talk about. It was given to me by Athena, the goddess of wisdom, just after we defeated the Herculeans and set sail for Paradise Island. It is through this magic sphere that I have been able to know what has gone on and is going on in the other world, and even at times forecast the future. This is why we Amazons have been able to far surpass the inventions of the so-called man-made civilization. We are not only stronger and wiser than men, but our weapons are better, our flying machines are further advanced. And it is through my knowledge that I have gained from the magic sphere that I have taught you, my daughter, all the arts and sciences and languages of modern as well as ancient times. But let us see where your American captain came from and how he got here. Watch closely. Sir, I've come to report that I have uncovered information as to who the leaders of the spy ring are. I'd like permission to close in on them personally. Well, that's ridiculous, Captain. You're the most valuable man in the Army Intelligence Department. We can't risk losing you. That may be, sir, but these men are dangerous, and capturing them is a job I'd rather not shift onto anyone else's shoulders. I'd hope you'd understand, sir. Hmm. I believe I do, son. I believe I do. Go to it, and the best of luck to you. That night, Steve Trevor drove to a hidden airfield not far from an Army air base. Those rats have their planes hidden here. Von Storm and his driver should pass by here any minute. If I can capture him, their leader, a cleanup job will be simple. Meanwhile, in another car, approaching Steve's hiding place. Tonight we strike. Ya, ja, mein Herr. We send our planes into the stratosphere where they cannot be seen and bomb American airfields and training camps. Since our planes will not be identified, it cannot be construed as an act of war. Until our Japanese friends are ready to strike at the heart of their navy. Suddenly, as the car passes Steve's hiding place, the captain leaps onto the running board. What's this? Just take it easy, boys. You've got company. If you'll be good enough to stop the car and step out quietly, there won't be any trouble, gentlemen. The driver swerves the car and suddenly crashes into a tree. Good luck, Fritz. Ha, ah, gentlemen. The quick thinking of our driver has netted for us an American officer. He is not hurt, just unconscious. He will come in handy for our plans. Nicht wahr? Von Storm and his men enter the secret airfield with their captured prize. He is that Captain Trevor who has been giving us so much trouble. It is a good thing that we have one of the American robot plans that we stole. You, Fritz, get the American plane ready and set the robot controls. 
I want it to be flying so that it can be seen over the American aerodrome while you, in the stratoplane, drop bombs from above. Ah, and so we put an American officer in the robot plane. The malignance of your ideas of refreshing mine air. A few minutes later, at the American aerodrome. Hey, look, isn't that one of our planes? Yeah, but it doesn't look like it's gonna land. At that moment, the robot plane is directly over the aerodrome, mine air. Good. Release your bombs. What in the world? One of our own planes dropping bombs on us. There's something strange going on here. Duck, run for cover. That pilot, whoever he is, is circling to drop another load. And in the robot plane, Steve Trevor begins to regain consciousness. Where am I? I'm circling my own field. Why, this is a robot control plane. Let's see if I can make the throttle work. Suddenly, the pilot of the spy plane becomes alarmed. What is this? The plane is not obeying the robot control. Something is wrong! Something is wrong, radically wrong, for Steve Trevor has sized up the situation and is at once on the tail of the spy plane. Fritz, the pilot of the spy plane, is panic-stricken as he realizes he has a skilled opponent on his tail. He radios for instructions. Von Storm, the American has recovered consciousness. He is turning the robot plane against me. I can't shoot him down. What shall I do? Hello, Von Storm, do you read me? Don't go. Don't let him shoot you down. They must not find out this plan. They must not know you dropped those bombs. Get them away from this field. The stratoplane turns tail and runs. Steve follows. He's turned tail, that skunk. I gotta shoot him down. He keeps moving too high for me. I'll catch him if it's the last thing I do. Always out of shooting range, the German plane keeps Steve following until they are far out at sea. I wonder how long he's going to keep this up. Well, as long as there's gas left in this crate, I'm going to stay with him. Hours pass, and many miles, hundreds of miles, pass with them. But Steve keeps doggedly on the trail of the enemy plane until finally his gas begins to run low. Running short of gas? Looks like he has me licked. Wait! What's that below? Can that be an island? It seems surrounded by strange cloud formations. Well, Doctor, there's the history of your captain, up to the very moment his plane crashed on Paradise Island. But Mother, he must be taken back to America to finish the job he started. Getting him back would be a problem. Leave me alone, my daughter. I must consult with Aphrodite and Athena, our goddesses. I must seek their advice. Yes, mother. It wouldn't be any trick at all for me to fly him back myself, but mother would never hear of it. In the queen's solitude, the spirits of Aphrodite and Athena, the guiding goddesses of the Amazons, appear as though in a mist. Hippolyte. Athena and I have come to give you warning. Danger again threatens the entire world. The gods have decreed that this American army officer crash on Paradise Island. You must deliver him back to America to help fight the forces of hate and oppression. Yes, Hippolyte. American liberty and freedom must be preserved. You must send with him your strongest and wisest Amazon, the finest of your Wonder Women, for America. The last citadel of democracy and of equal rights for women needs your help. Yes, Aphrodite. Yes, Athena. I heed your call. I shall find the strongest and wisest of the Amazons. She shall go forth to fight for liberty and freedom and all humankind. And so the Amazon Queen prepares a tournament to decide which is the most capable of her subjects. But Mother... Why can't I enter this tournament? Surely I have as much right. No, daughter, no. I forbid you to enter the contest. The winner must take this man back to America and never return. And I couldn't bear to have you leave me forever. 
the great day arrives. From all parts of Paradise Island come the Amazon contestants. But one young contestant insists on wearing a mask. If you are all ready, let the tournament begin. And may the best maiden win! The tests begin. First, the foot race. A trained deer sets the pace. As the deer easily outruns the pack, suddenly the slim masked figure darts forward, her legs churning madly, and not only catches up with the deer, but passes it. As tests of strength and agility go on throughout the day, more and more contestants drop out wearily until number seven, the masked maiden, and Mala, number 12, keep winning event after event until each has won 10 of the grueling contests. And now, a deadly hush blankets the audience. The queen has risen. Contestants seven and 12, you are the only survivors of the tournament. Now you must get ready for the 21st, final and greatest test of all, bullets and bracelets. Your Majesty. Good work so far, Mala. Now, each of you shall shoot five times. Your opponent must catch the bullets on her bracelet, or else expect to be wounded. Now, take your places. Number 12 will shoot first. The command. And the girl fires point blank at number seven, the masked maiden. <laughs> the ultimate test of speed of both eye and movement. Number seven's bracelets become silver flashes of streaming light as they parry the death thrusts of the hurtling bullets. Number seven passes the test unscathed. Now it's her turn to fire. Her opponent's fast. But not fast enough. Ah, my shoulder. The winner, contestant number seven, the Masked Maiden. You may remove your mask, number seven. I want to see the face of the strongest and most agile of all the Amazons. Daughter, you! I, I knew it. I felt it. I thought perhaps, well, it's too late now. You've won, and I'm proud of you. In America, you'll indeed be a Wonder Woman, for I have taught you well. And let yourself be known as Diana, after your godmother, the goddess of the moon. And here is a costume I have designed to be used by the winner, to wear in America. It's red and gold eagle, a symbol of our friendship. Why, mother, it's lovely. And so Diana, the Wonder Woman, giving up her heritage and her right to eternal life, leaves Paradise Island to take the man she loves back to America, the land she learns to love and protect and adopts as her own.